All right, what's happening, everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. So check it out. Um, all right, I know I didn't schedule the whole week of uh, live streams yet, but I'm kind of trying to figure out what's happening this week with my work and everything. So just taking a day by day this week. But uh, I wanted to, s this one's actually a bit smaller today than what I normally do. How's everybody doing? What's happening? JSA Drawing, Nicole, Joyce, Trisha, Cubs, Wayne, Kim, Jeremy, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so I'm doing this one a bit smaller today. This is a six by nine with uh, taped edges on it. Uh, the reason I did that is because I'm doing a portrait uh, landscape and I have this small scrap laying around and I thought it was perfect so that way we could you guys can see everything I'm doing kind of fits on the page perfectly on the video um, and maybe get a little bit of my palette in here too but anyway let's try to quickly get this something sketched in here just to see let's see what we got So I thought this was pretty cool. I really like the lighting. Found this photo today online. Um, so I'll just try to try to get the perspective pretty quickly here. But also not too detailed. You know, we'll just keep it. Sketchy. Try to keep my pencil moving. Since this is a smaller painting, usually smaller. I have a lot of fun with smaller paintings because it's so much. It's so easy to get. It's not easy, I guess, but it's a lot easier easier for me to get like you know bold brush strokes and just more sketchiness, loose type of painting and stuff uh, not worry not worry too much about details but more focused on the overall image and I think that's something I always kind of try to stress in my work and try to figure out and understand you know just the overall getting that overall image to read and it's a lot easier to smell uh, smell <laughs> a lot easier to smell a lot easier to sell smaller paintings. Sell smaller paintings. Um, you know, it's easier to ship them. It's easier, to, you know, people are more interested in smaller things. Most people already have their walls full of stuff. So if you paint something smaller, you know, it's easier, usually easier to sell it. It's cheaper. You can do them a lot quickly. And, and that's the thing. That's one reason why uh, I kind of do smaller paintings because I don't want to invest like so many hours or something into a larger work and then it never sells, you know, it's like, oh, I could have done like how many small paintings and probably sold most of them, you know, uh, it's just one of those things, but I'm just rambling folks. But, uh, anyway, thanks everybody for joining in today. Glad to hear that. Uh, Jess, Jess C glad, glad to hear this is a good way to end your day. So really appreciate that um, so what I'm mainly going to focus on here is the light the light is very important and I'm actually probably going to leave this part of the building over here that has this diagonal nice diagonal light coming down probably going to leave this part of the building white of the paper and a little bit of sliver of this as well it looks like is also white So we'll connect the side building a little bit to this. Uh, it's probably hard for you guys to see this sketch I'm doing. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I'm trying pretty lightly. I mean, I have like a 2H pencil. Oh, you can't even see it anymore. But I have a 2H pencil, so just keep things pretty light. But dark enough to where I know I'll be able to see it when I start painting but I thought this was a pretty cool scene it's kind of like a little alleyway or something I'm not sure where it's at or what country or anything like that just trying to take note here of the light and the shadows and stuff let's 
try to modify this a bit. Yeah, I just really love the light on this uh, scene, so that's what I'm going to try to focus on. A lot of these details don't really matter. Just need to get in the big shapes, you know, windows, doors, stuff like that. There's some kind of like lantern lamp hanging off the side of this building. Hmm. Could be cool to try to put that in there. Maybe right here. Kind of adds something to the closer to us. Might give a little bit of depth in a way. Little ornamental thing hanging there. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Um, but it is a pretty small painting, so don't need to put in a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, these sides can pretty much just be dark. There'll be a little bit of line work or something just to denote the perspective here a bit or something, but pretty much it. Uh, a lot of this is kind of kind of too thick where I'm going to be putting the light, so I want to just Anyway, okay. I'm going to wet my colors real quick. My palette. Just get some water flowing on there. Looks like I need to refill some of my colors here. A little low. Some of these. Um, oh, we got a lot of comments here. Okay. Um, sorry to hear that, Sue. That does not sound fun. Um, Purple in this painting? Uh, yeah, we could. That's true. I guess a lot of the shadow could be purple or something. Uh, there's some purple shutters and stuff. I guess I'll show you guys the reference photo real quick. So that's the reference. Uh, so we got some maroons, some reds, purpley, purpley maroons, and then dark foreground buildings and stuff. But uh, also, while I'm at it, you guys should uh, check out my website. I got some other artwork and stuff. You guys can see the kind of things that I draw and paint here on these live streams. If you're new, thanks for tuning in. But uh, definitely check out my website. I got stuff on sale over there, or for sale. And I also have like a page where you can support me, PayPal, Venmo, Patreon. I have some music on Bandcamp you can check out, uh, and some t-shirts and stuff. So that's all on my website, SchaeferFineArt.com. I also have like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all that kind of stuff, Pinterest. You can check me out on all those platforms. And also, uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. Uh, help support the channel. Greatly, greatly appreciate it, folks. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get into it. So I'm going to bump up this a little bit so you guys can see my colors a bit more clearly. And uh, <laughs> we'll see how this... See how the camera works with that kind of uh, lighting scenario. So I'm not used to my palette being sideways like this, so it might take me a few minutes to get used to that. Because I'm used to, I have muscle memory where my colors are. Normally it's like this. Um, you know, I could do it like that. You can see mostly all of it. Um, there's just some dark colors over here you miss, like ultramarine blue and stuff. But not a big deal. Okay, so I think um, I think a yellow ochre wash. I'm gonna go with more of a traditional method, I guess, for this one. We'll see how this how this uh, 
start kind of takes us, what route this kind of takes us. So I gotta be careful here, even though I'm going pretty broadly. So there's some lights in here. So I gotta, I wanna leave that the, the white of the paper. But a lot of the stuff in the shadows can be darker, so I can go over with yellow ochre to start. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm painting the shadows right now, yellow ochre. Leaving the, the oh, I went over that white spot I wanted to leave. Ah, oh, man. It's okay. And this whole little sliver of this building is supposed to be white. So I can probably try to bring that back out a little bit. It's so pale that it might not matter. It's going to dry off pretty pale, hopefully. And that's why you got to pay attention. Yeah, not too bad. It'll just have that building have a little bit of temperature in the light area, but it's okay. What I can do is I will start to, we can add some ultramarine blue or some uh, ultramarine violet deep. Start cooling it off down here. Maybe a little bit in the shadows too. These areas where it gets a little darker. And then, uh, don't worry, didn't forget about the sky. I kind of wanted that to kind of bleed with this building, but it seems like it's almost dry already. But it's okay. All right, pretty simple, pretty basic already. We got the overall, you know, overall kind of tone of everything. You know, if I want, I can let's darken this down just a little bit. I'll just cool off. Just these other, these side buildings, just trying to get more value in there real quick. And the painting is actually a little bit darker, so I'm gonna tone this down for you guys. It looks about right, probably. So already we kind of have this light effect, boom, that's what I was going for. But these, everything's gonna get, gonna get much darker. What's going on, Nathan? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Nashia, Nashia, Matthias, what's happening? Amanda. Yeah, perspective perspective is very difficult to, to figure out. I mean, it's it's all. I mean, it comes down to it depends on what aspect of perspective you're talking about. But you got to remember, I, I always try to go back to the eye level. You know, where is the eye level? And in this photograph, particularly, the eye level is like down here. So, what that means is like try to set this up. That means like eye level's down here, so everything, there's a vanishing point somewhere along that eye level. 
and it's probably somewhere in the middle here because everything is converging downward. So the further up you get away from that eye level, it's kind of like radial lines going out from that vanishing point. And that's, that's literally how we get this line here, this building, the roof. And then as you rotate, like let's say the vanishing point is here, like this dot down here. If you extend a line out, everything is gonna, that's the perspective. Like, okay, the line over here is gonna be like this. And then as you get more towards it, it gets flatter and flatter. And then underneath it, you know, the road down here, everything is, is it's not always the case because there's many, there can be many vanishing points and stuff in real life and many different kinds of perspective. But um, no worries, Nicole. It's all good. Thanks for tuning in anyway. I appreciate it. Just leave a like on the video if you haven't already. It helps me get more viewers, helps me get more. Yeah, if you can if you can simplify it to a single point, it's not always the case, of course. In, in real life, there's you can look any direction, and there's all kinds of points, things vanishing to certain points. And but uh, for the most part, like this simple kind of scene, like everything, mostly everything is going to one point somewhere. You know. Um, so if you can imagine a dot, and then radial lines just going straight out from that at every every minute of the clock, so to speak. And everything lines up with that. So stuff right in the, in the center is gonna, like if this, it's gonna be going straight down. You know, this roof line, if we look at the reference photo, it's almost going straight down, I mean. But it, it points right to the vanishing point. But sometimes, sometimes things aren't straight in real life, so sometimes things can be like, you know, at, at different angles and stuff. So like, if this wasn't straight, it could be jagged and have all these weird things happening. But for the most part, most architecture and stuff is just straight. So this is our first layer, folks. So now we can kind of focus more on shadow areas, the darker areas, because uh, a lot of this will just leave to be yellow ochre some of this we can get a little bit darker, maybe add, maybe cool it down. Um, you know, but mostly uh, we'll just kind of leave it. I'm trying to figure out where to go from here. Um, uh, JSA drawing, I'm using 140 pound uh, paper. It's 100% cotton paper as well. So that's what you want to look for if you're able to get that paper or if your parents or guardian, whoever can, can get that paper for you. I use Arches, 140 pound, 100% cotton. So normally this paper, I mean, it's very strong. It's, it's very difficult to rip. So you're probably using some kind of pulp paper. So it's made out of fiber rather than cotton. And uh, it, can, it can be more easier to tear and all that stuff so yeah definitely try to get like as close to 100 percent cotton as you can but i know for some people it's not really possible but just do your best you know you can get large sheets online like uh 30 inches by 22 inches online for like seven dollars a sheet it sounds expensive but if you just do a bunch of if you cut it down to a, into a bunch of small paintings like this you can get it. You can get a good. You know, it's gonna last you a while, and uh, you can get some good practice in. Uh, so I should probably start with like the main focal area, um, or should I start with the darks and then move inward? That's the question. That's the question. Uh, I guess I'll just start back here. Um, let's just try to see what we can do here. Uh, But anyway, I hope, I hope that answered your question. I hope that helped. But I'm going to try to get into the painting a little bit here. But like I said, I'm trying to be loose today, folks. We're going to see. What I can do here. I don't want I want all this to be soft, you know, back here. This doesn't matter. There we go. 
That's better. That's going to dry much lighter anyway. Uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I'm kind of doing like line work and stuff. <laughs> like, okay, I don't need to be doing that. Um, big shapes, big shapes. So maybe the shutters and things, or I wonder if this color is a little too yellow. I need to cool everything down again, slightly. Um, so maybe that's that's something to do. A little bit of purple and blue or something. Um, I could have gone cooler overall, but to begin with. But it's okay. Now I can kind of leave some of that yellow ochre there to show warmth of the light in some areas so now we'll just cool down these shadows more and uh, like I said that, that yellow ochre will kind of glow through a bit and I think it'll be I think it'll be helpful overall so I'm kind of not I'm not mad at the way I started this it's good to have that kind of vibration, little color vibration happening. So I can kind of leave some spaces and stuff um, here and there. And with these, I can go much darker, much cooler here. There we go. More light effect there and again. And now I can kind of focus. And see that, that yellow ochre kind of peeks through everywhere. So it's it's nice to have that underneath, I think. Um, looks really nice, I think. And I left like a little bit of yellow ochre there. There and stuff, so yeah, it's good to have. That'd be different in places. Yeah, I can throw in some darks here, just to some warmer darks. Just have some, keep it soft.
Okay. We'll just let that all dry crazy and stuff. Doesn't really matter. Um, maybe I'll actually use a smaller brush for once. <laughs> I hate doing it, but maybe for these shutters and stuff, I'll use a smaller brush. That's for you, Lane. If you're still here. I don't know if you're still tuning. It looks like you are. Um, using a smaller brush for you. <laughs> that never happens. But... Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd react to that. Um, okay, uh, yeah, the shutters. I think that's the main, one of the main areas of focal point, focal, focal something. So we'll use a, some alizarin crimson to be a really nice mixture with some Ultramarine violet, deep. That'll give us a nice maroonish purple we're kind of looking for. It's pretty nice looking. We can always add a little bit of ultramarine blue there to cool it off even a little bit more. For the shadows, try to see what this looks like. Once I start putting it in here. Let's go even cooler. Let's really push the cool, warm and cool. Hmm, where's the bottom of these shutters? I guess down here. That looks pretty dark. Maybe too dark. Just lighten up some of it. There's a little bit of light hitting this one. But like I said, don't get too detailed here. Don't get carried away. We'll just Painted in boldly. No, I'm just lightening up right where the light kind of starts to hit right there. Just try to give more of a... I've used pretty bold colors before. I mean, I think last week I was pretty bold with the oranges and stuff and the reds. That warm warm that I used but yeah I understand I use a lot of grays and stuff but 
that's uh, you know harmony is harmony is very important when it comes to painting making it all work if you use if you always use bold colors then it's very hard to and you're gonna lose that kind of harmony in a way so try to keep things harmonious I'll zoom it in for you guys since I'm doing some smaller work here Trying to vary the color a bit. We'll put some like purple in there, maybe, maybe some blue. Let's go. Let's go wild with it. Or maybe even some turquoise. Let's see what that might look in here. Be a little wild. It's kind of hard for you guys to see that. I don't know. I'm just experimenting right now. I'm just like. Let's see if we got a little bit of turquoise in there. But the problem with that is, if you use it in one place, you got to kind of use it in another place. Otherwise, it will look like it stands out. It doesn't fit into place. So I'll probably try to use a little bit of turquoise somewhere else. And that will give the... That's how you make things a little harmonious, more harmonious. So, you can start painting some of that. A little bit of turquoise in there or something. Um, and then maybe just a lizard and crimson. Probably even put a little bit of turquoise up here. Just a little bit. So, you know, just trying to play around with color, you know. Every painting is always different. You just kind of go with the flow. I kind of try to go with the flow and just be like, eh, what do I feel at the moment? What, what could make this look interesting? And actually, Alizarin Crimson and Turquoise, if you guys watched the live streams many months ago, I did one painting where I used only Alizarin Crimson and the Turquoise color. And uh, had some really interesting grays that it created and very interesting harmony, the way the color mixed together and stuff. I ended up selling that painting like the next day or something. Somebody scooped that one up. But it was very beautiful. Uh, yeah, it was a very beautiful harmony that was created with that one. So you guys can see, like, even though I'm painting it loosely, I'm still, like, taking my time. It's not like, just because something's painted loosely, it doesn't mean that it was painted that way, so to speak. You know, you, you can still plan it, take your time, and, like, be aware of the way you're painting it. And it looks like, oh, okay, he just, like, threw that stuff down really quickly or something, you know. But it's not, it's not the case always. I'm just trying to make the edges a bit interesting and stuff. Try not to overdo it too much here.
So starting to get starting to get somewhere. Um, you know, these are really we got some really dark darks in here, so we're gonna have to obviously we're gonna push the foreground towards us or pull it towards us with some more darks. You didn't miss much, Matthias. You know, just filling in some of the some of the uh, stuff here. Just a little bit of painting. That's all. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by, everybody that uh, tuned in and had to check out. It's all good. Try painting digitally. Uh, I painted digitally a few times on my iPad. It's a lot. It's it's kind of easy for me. It's kind of too easy, I think, because I even paint everything on one layer. I don't use like all these different modes and different layers, so I just paint everything on one layer, but. It's just too easy because you can just pick a color like it's it's just you know there's something different about it than obviously than painting like this like painting like this you got you know you got to figure out like how thick do you want the paint if it's wet or damp uh is the paper damp how much water to use like all these different factors and digital it's like okay i can do pressure sensitivity and opacity it's like eh, okay <laughs> or texture you know but everything's kind of, I mean, of course, it's it's not, like, super easy, of course. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It's very, you have to do, learn a lot of skills and stuff. But compared to this, it just, to me, there's no comparison. To me, there's just no comparison. If I'm being honest. So I think what's going to bring this painting together is like a lot of little line work and stuff. Be pretty fun. Yeah, see I accidentally painted that part earlier. So this whole line up here was supposed to connect into this shape and I kind of messed that up. But it's okay, we can just try to still keep this interesting. So what has been inspiring you the most lately? You seem to have hit a really good rhythm for yourself. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's inspired me recently. I haven't really been inspired to do plain air, unfortunately. Like, the, I went out last week, last weekend or something, uh, and it was just really windy and cold, and <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't paint here right now. Like, this is just too much. Uh, so unfortunately I, I don't feel inspired that way, which kind of bums me out. I'm actually really bummed out about that. I've been wanting to do plein air for so long now. And uh, part of me just doesn't even know what to paint or where to go. I just, I don't feel inspired by my landscape around me. And just, there's nothing that intrigues me around here. Unfortunately, maybe I'm being too hard on myself or not paying attention enough, or I don't know. But uh, at least with these live streams and stuff, I just kind of try to think of it as a job now. And most of the time, what inspires me is, is the work I, I do. Like if I end up doing a good painting on here, then I'm, that inspires me more. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. This turned out great. Like <laughs> that actually inspires me, to be honest. like my own work, like to, to push myself and to keep just painting every day and to um, keep doing stuff. You know, the shadow, this whole overall shadow on this far building, it's actually darker in the photo, but I'm actually gonna leave it light like this because it actually enhances the reflected light, um, the the look of reflected light, especially once I darken these foreground buildings, which I'm going to do very soon. Um, you know, some of these shutters and stuff that I paint are kind of too dark, but I can just lighten them up slightly just to see if that helps a little bit. Just kind of go with that more of a reflected light look, like I was saying.
but it's not that big a deal. This should definitely be dark because it's a window or inside, inside of a window. Um, I need to kind of paint the light on the shutters. So I'm trying, I'm going to use like a, a warmer mixture for that lighter warmer. See if that appears nicely or not. Looks kind of weird on the camera, but maybe I should do like more of a red, warm red. Not bad, I guess. Uh, hopefully that gives the idea. I don't know if it's too dark or something. But maybe. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, I think we need to, let's, let's get back to the big brush here and uh, at the darks in the foreground. Let's go pretty dark. So some of these darks are going to be warm. Normally the darkest dark in your painting, darkest dark, it's going to be warm. But uh, I wonder if I should still be going cool right now, maybe a little bit cooler. Not too warm. Let's see what happens. Try to be bold with a lot of what I'm doing here. Uh, black? Where am I adding black? I don't really like using black like that. Uh, anything really, really dark. Because I want it to have like a temperature to it. So, is this still wet? I don't know why that happened. Um, so I normally, I won't add anything black, it'll look really dark, but it's, it's actually like a, a dark brown. Because I want it to have like a temperature, you know, I don't want it to be too dark, or like, you know, black, especially in a landscape. Most of the time in nature and stuff, and stuff like this, like, very little stuff it's going to be like black looking you know it's almost you just don't see that in nature but adding these other darks and things I think I need to just let's keep this soft too actually a lot of this stuff I'm doing keep it soft and actually I want to get darker with this especially down here We'll go darker still on top of that once it dries. I feel like I need thicker paint, thicker paint here. There we go.
So the reason I'm softening all this because it's in shadow and uh, I've kind of learned from past live streams, past paintings, like it's nice, one, one of the Sargent copies that I did, you know, a lot of, a lot of his shadows had like really softness like this and it kind of just hands that lighting effect and all these stronger kind of hard lines in the light, hopefully. So that's what we'll try to try to keep stuff soft, a bit soft. Just give it a nice look. And we're gonna make the street pretty blue because it's gonna be reflecting the blue sky. Up above. So you see that all that softness I think really really helps. Yep, I'm gonna do the lantern, of course. Um, you know, I don't know if I want to splatter in this painting. Maybe I will a little bit down here actually in the foreground, but not a lot, not a lot of splatter in this one. Um, How will you do texture on the building? Yeah, that's a good point. Like mostly down here, there's, there's like some brick texture and stuff. I was thinking about that. Um, you know, I'll probably just, once I, I start doing the line work, like I'm gonna do like line work around, you know, a lot of this stuff. I'll just put in some like, just suggest a few little blocks of uh, color, you know, nothing too dark or anything, but. Um, but there are like some plants and stuff down here, so maybe just splattering a bit on these foreground buildings will help like, give a little more texture to the foreground, bring it closer to us. But I like the mysteriousness of what's in the shadow, how this is all soft and bleeding. It's really nice, gives a really nice effect, I think. I really like what's happening here. You know, I don't, you don't have to define every single edge, you know, you kinda, your eye just, We'll figure it out, you know. Like up here, the edge of this building, like we know that's like an edge of a building. Like I don't have to sit there and define everything, but I may put like some little line work later on, like just to strengthen some of it. Like this is a nice line here. You know, I got some nice lines here. So, you know, I don't have to worry too much about separating everything or stuff like that. Um, yeah, light splattering will add age to the building. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I want to do. Not too dark. Or anything. That's interesting. Uh, thanks for that comment, uh, Mar Mar Marquin, Marquin. I'm not interested in art, but this live stream is interesting. Cool, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how long it's gonna be interesting to you, but I'm just drying this real quick and then put another layer on. Call this thing, I think once I take the tape off of this one, it's gonna look really nice on the edges. Oh, so it's funny, I'm reading back up. Now you guys are hoping that I splatter on the paint. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You guys are so used to me adding splatter to everything. You guys are like, yeah, make sure you splatter this one. Yep, I just cracked 100 watching. Thanks everybody for tuning in, greatly appreciated. You guys are the best. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll try to answer them in the chat. I hope I, I hope I didn't miss any questions earlier. If so, just repost them. I'll try to get to it. Try to see them again. There's a bunch of water somewhere. What is happening here? Okay. Okay. Probably good enough. This feels dry. This part's a little bit wet, but not really a big deal. Okay, so 
So what now? I think a lot of just line work, maybe some dry brushing, dark dry brushing uh, on these buildings, and then some lighter line work on this. Splattering, and then boom, I think we're good. Um, so let's try to do that. Let's try to do that. Uh, we got some, we'll do some lighter warm type of line work. Maybe not too warm. We'll add some blue to that. Back here, so. But also nothing too defining, you know, we'll just, I can try to zoom this in for you guys. Boom, okay. You know, just something to give some, a little bit of structure to, I wonder if I can do this in the light area a little bit. Just give structure to the window, you know. That was a pretty nice stroke. I like that one. That looks really nice. There's actually a line that goes across the building, but I don't know if I really want to put that in. I might put in, I wonder if I can dry brush it pretty nicely. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's actually a little shadow on this shutter here. Let's see if we can potentially put that in. Sounds good, Sue. Hope you do it one day. There's no time like the present or tomorrow. I love tomorrow, you know. It's everybody's favorite day, tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, I understand. You just got to be in the mood to do it, you know. No worries. Okay, don't need to do too much here, just a little bit here and there. We can put some, like a darker, darker line here, and the shutters. I'm gonna have to paint that lantern back in, can't forget that. And I totally lost the drawing of it, so. That's always good. I have to figure out, <laughs> I have to just make that up again. No biggie. No biggie. Um, Trying to make the part parts in shadow a bit darker than the parts in light. So just give more of a more of an illusion of something. I don't know. So this is how I can kind of put some texture down on the building down here, just kind of, if I can dry brush a lot of it. If 
but it's not even that big a deal. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, all that. Sorry folks, I'm a little too quiet. I'm just trying to focus right now. Just filling in some of this. So just this little line here kind of separates this building from the background there. And it doesn't even have to be dark or sharp all the way down. Just a little bit there. See all that line work kind of just, it brought everything, the focus to that, you know. It's almost like I don't even have to do much more of the foreground, but I will, I will do more because it does need some things. But, you know, it's like, uh, it's all this little stuff that that helped. I'll push it a bit, you know. Okay, um, hmm, let's see, let's see, okay, looking pretty good, looking pretty good, um, tad too cool, which roof, this roof, I don't even care about that roof, I'm not even worried about roof, um, you know, most of my colors are wrong anyway. You know, I had this this uh, turquoise in there. You know, I just, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as I get most of the temperature right, I'm getting, working on the light effect. But, you know, the roof's basically dissolved into the sky, so. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, Sorry if I missed a bunch of comments, folks. Um, Arlie Flor Flores says, you teach better than my actual teachers at school, and also this is actually not boring. Hey, I appreciate that a lot. Greatly appreciated. Salt would make a cool texture effect. Yeah, you're right. I always forget to do that. I actually don't have salt that's actually like small grains of salt. I have salt that's big crystals that you crush up so actually I can't even do that salt texture if I wanted to <laughs> uh, okay yeah I need to do the lantern I think I think that's what one thing I do now and then we'll do the 
Or do I do the line work on the buildings first? Probably line work on the buildings first and then try to, that lamp will be, lantern will be a, one of the finishing things here, but. Let's see if I can get some nice dry brushing going on. I'm gonna try. It's kind of difficult to do. You have to you have to do you have to use just the right amount of water to pigment ratio, so very little water. And you also have to do the strokes quickly. And yeah, I'm 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 concerned right now that I'm not gonna be able to do it. And you have to use the right amount of paint on your brush too. Like it's pretty difficult. It's pretty difficult, but I'm gonna try it. It's something I need to just keep practicing, you know. So there we go. Nice. See the dry brushing effect we get there? So that's what I'm I'm trying to Trying to get into my paintings there, especially with this part. It's a bit warm. Try to cool it down with some blue. So I'm just kind of inventing details. I don't really know <laughs> what I'm, you know, it's not, it's not really important what's happening down here. As long as it just looks, it supports everything else that's going on. You know, it's not, it's not really an important, uh, doesn't have to be, you know, cause I want the viewer to just try to fill that in their, themselves. You know, I think it's more fun for the viewer to, the viewer's mind to make sense of everything, you know? So that's what I try to, I try to remember that. And I don't want to describe everything, but. Do you ever plain, paint plain air and if, how long do you take? I actually have, <laughs> this is gonna, uh, if you don't know that I paint plain air, then you're gonna have to check out my channel because uh, I have 116 videos in my plain air adventure playlist. And also I have a channel called plain air adventures. If you actually look up, go to YouTube and search plain air adventures. I film every plain air that I do uh, I kind of vlog it and film it. So I have 116 episodes currently. So yeah, I do paint plein air, usually about this size. Um, so yeah, I've done a lot of work like this, this small kind of sketchy work. Well, I'm glad it looks effortless. I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel effortless to me. <laughs> um, you know, I'm trying to be careful here with putting too much down or not enough or, you know, it's a very delicate balance. You know, it's easy to overdo. We can solidify some of these darks a little bit. Um,
Ooh, it's a bit dark. Didn't want to do that. So just add some water and uh, boom. I think some of this on this side's a bit heavy. Give it a spray or two. Try to soften that slightly. Okay. I think I need to put that lantern in now before I get carried away. There we go. Let's do that lantern. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate that. He says the light and color in this one is great. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I think so, too. It's getting there. Um, I just want to try to get some thicker paint here. Let me get this lantern in there. It's a pretty dark lantern. I don't want to go too dark. Try to match the darkness that I have on the paper. already but I think zoom this in for you guys I know this is like this is an important part so we're just gonna freehand this because I lost the drawing that I had in there at the very beginning uh, if I have it in there, I can barely see anything if it's still there. This is why drawing is so important because painting is drawing with color. You always, when you're painting, you're always drawing. You know, when I'm doing the shutters, doing the buildings, like I'm always drawing stuff. You got to keep, keep, you know, the drawing in line. You know, you can't. I know some people aren't interested in drawing that much, and I agree, I'm not like super into it, but sometimes I am. I get into these weird stages where I am, but I really love painting more. But, um, you know, so now I got a nice little lantern there. What I can do, I can kind of fake that there's glass there, because it looks, it doesn't look like there's glass there in the photo, but I kind of want to. So I think I need to lighten up the inside just a little bit. So I'm not trying to show that it's lit up or anything. What I'm trying to show is that there's glass there and it's just giving like a, it's, you know, it brings more attention to the lantern a bit and helps separate it from the background. So something like that. So now we have a nice little lantern with the glass, you know. Um, you know, it has some like interesting design work here or something. I don't know. Do you watch Crystal Maze on Nickelodeon? No, I haven't watched Nickelodeon for like 17 years, I think. 
I haven't had a TV in many, many years. Um, I like the effort it, Lane says, I like the effort it takes to create art because then it seems to have a greater reward once finished. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Well, I think the, the shutters and light are a little funny looking, but you know, I don't know what else I can do. I can make them darker, but I don't know if darker is gonna work, really. <laughs> I think what looks so weird is that this one is dark, but this part's light. So I don't wanna lighten it up all the way. I just wanna make it look a little more reflected than this bottom part. If that makes sense. Like it's partially in light, partially being very lit up. So maybe something like that. Just enhances that diagonal light effect that I was wanting from the very beginning. Because I, I left, ended up leaving that shadow pretty light compared to everything else. Um, hmm, am I missing anything else? I did the dark line work, the light line work, the lantern. Um, Yeah. Blue color on the sky? No, I don't, I mean, to match the photo, yeah, but if I do that, it's gonna make it look like a stormy day. I've done dark blue skies too much, it's gonna look like a stormy day, so. Uh, no, I do not know Persona 4, never heard of that. Thanks, Isaiah, is, is Isaiah. I think that's how I say your name, Isaiah, Isaiah, um, either way, I saw your comments, but yeah, I think, I think if I, if I darken the sky, it's going to make it look less like a, a light day, um, because normally the sky is the lightest thing normally in landscapes, in this case the building's lighter because it's a light building and the light's focused on that, but the sky is, would be the second lightest thing, so, I want to keep that in mind and um, but yeah I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the um, comment on that yeah because sometimes you guys do give good comments like and help me out and make it a better piece of art you know but I think I'm done with it I'm gonna pull the pull the tape off and we'll see if I truly am done with it or not Because I've already been an hour and 15 minutes, I think. It already took too long for this small painting. I thought this one was gonna go a lot quicker, actually. <laughs> I put a little too much detail in it. But it looks good, it's not too detailed or anything, you know. Um, it's really hard to get the, the actual look of it on this webcam. But I will show you guys really quickly on the webcam. So this is the painting. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, let me see, yeah, I really like this one actually. I feel like I got the mysteriousness, the softness in the shadows, you know, in the, in the that softness overall and then the light effect and some interesting colors and stuff. You know, I think I captured what I set out to capture. So um, yeah, if you like this video, be sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel to support channel support what I do here folks you can also join and become a member of my YouTube channel as well but uh, also check out my website shaferfineart.com I got some drawings on there from past live streams for sale I also have some paintings from past live streams for sale as well so be sure to check all that out I also have a support page where you can donate to me in PayPal Venmo t-shirts I got a patreon page if you want to support me there you know there's all places to support me um, I also have a band camp where I make instrumental music in my own time, so you can check that out as well. So like I said, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. But uh, if you have any last minute questions, let me know. I'll be sure to answer them uh, real quickly here. What's going on, Enrique? Thanks for tuning in. Mm. Thanks, Philip. Yeah, I, I like my architectural work too, actually. A lot of it, it comes out pretty, 
pretty nice, I think, most of the time. But I appreciate that. I appreciate appreciate you supporting me. Supported me on this channel a lot, man. I appreciate all the support from everybody, especially Philip. He's bought many of my paintings. Greatly appreciated. Um... Can someone subscribe to me? Well, if I find anyone named someone, I will let them know. <laughs> Nathan says, uh, you really got the feeling of the reference without copying it. Yeah, that's that's what I was trying to do. Exactly. I mean, that, that sums it up, you know. It, I, I feel like I could have even pushed the color a bit more. You know, I kind of forgot to use this turquoise. I feel like I should have used that a bit more. I could have used that in the, in the foreground a bit. But I didn't want it to be too distracting, so I kind of like that there's just a little bit of turquoise here on that, on the shutters and things. It just gives it a little bit of interest there and makes your eye go there, you know. Um, uh, sorry to hear that, Peaches. You missed it. Eh, it wasn't too quick. This is normally how long they usually take me. It's just my recent live streams have been a bit longer, but... <laughs> But yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm sure somebody will subscribe to you. Yeah, it would have changed the focus if I would have done more, messed around with more color. You know, I want harmony and... and color in the right places you know it's easy to overdo color because everybody you know you think like oh a little bit of turquoise looks good maybe a lot of it will look better you know and you can easily you know i got the nice blue down here reflecting the sky and stuff so kind of warm versus cool even though everything's all in shadow if you guys notice here's the interesting thing about this even though this is all in shadow there's still cool and warms within the shadow this is actually warm back here a lot of reflected light bouncing around. And then I made the foreground much cooler. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to think about that, to see that. But um, Anyway, I guess nobody has any questions or anything. So, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one, maybe tomorrow, maybe not. Uh, I have to do some work this week. And... Um, I may not be able to stream tomorrow, but I'll do my best. I will do my best. Do you ever play with manneristic color schemes? What does that mean, Lane? Manneristic color schemes? I've never heard that before, actually. Thanks guys, I appreciate everything. Uh, what do you do when you are boring? What do you do when you are boring or do not have, do not have that? I'm not exactly sure I'm understanding your question there. I think it's being lost in translation a bit. What do you do when you are bored? I'm guessing when you're bored or do not have that much patience to do paint, what do you do? Uh, I just relax, I just, find something else to do um thanks jsa drawing i appreciate it yeah this one it came out pretty nice you know i'll try to zoom in the camera looks there we go it was kind of warming everything up a bit but yeah, i got some nice little detail here suggestion of detail on that lantern i think that really i think the lantern really helps actually with the whole painting it's pretty nice Yeah, maybe it means much, much to paint. You do not have that much to paint, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, that's a good question. I think you just find something else to do or try to get inspired, go look at some paintings on Instagram or on Pinterest or something and, and see what other people are doing and try to get inspired. But yeah, uh, Lane, I'm not sure what manneristic color schemes mean. You know, I, I like using different color schemes. I do have an idea, actually. For one stream in the, in the future, I want to 
I want to choose three colors uh, from my palette. I want to put them into a either have like some kind of dice or a digital dice and let the dice determine three colors for me to use for a painting and only use those three colors. So that's something I might, I might do that this week. I keep forgetting about that. It'd be cool to do like some kind of landscape like this and just have at random a digital dice. Like, you know, I think I have 11 or 12 colors. So, you know, do one through 12 and just have a number picker, randomly pick three numbers and uh, see what colors it ends up choosing, you know, like one, two, three, four, five, we'll just num label them. And uh, we'll do like some kind of challenge like that. Yeah, I thought it'd be cool. But um, anyway, guys, hope you have a good one. I'm going to get out of here. Um, like I said, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And uh, anyway, I'll see you guys on the next one.